Speaking of fitness, uh, Joseph Alobu, how is he today? Yeah, he's good. Uh, everyone who, who played on uh, Tuesday have uh, all come through the game. And uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've no problems on that front. Right. Uh, Harrison Biggins was a, a near miss for the, the match day squad. How, how is he with relation to tomorrow? Improving. A um, bit of a late call whether we, we bring him with us or not tomorrow. Um, or involve him, should that, I should say, really. Um, so just uh, we're pleased that everyone's okay from, from Tuesday's game. Uh, the injuries are actually starting to get better, uh, which is good. We should have Richard Wood Jack Senior back within two weeks. Um, James Maxwell, uh, probably three weeks. Um, I, I, I'd imagine by middle of November, probably early November, we should have at least six or seven players back. Which is a real, real bonus for us and um, makes us a lot stronger. Because mm. the frustration from your perspective is that some of them seem to have dragged on longer than perhaps was first predicted. Yeah, and it's it, it's 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 a difficult one because we, as much as we want the, the players back, we don't want to be putting them at risk of re-injuring stuff. And mm. we've already seen this with with one or two players where they've they've come back a little bit too early and. A reoccurrence or something else happens, you know, in a, in a different area. So um, it's just getting the balance right, I would say. And when those players return at the moment, it looks as though they're coming back into a squad where things are, are very much coming together. They they appear to be coming together for you right now. Yeah, I think we're improving that. Well, we feel we're improving all the time, um, and we want to, you know, all we want to do is keep building on that. You know, the, the the energy of the team's good, the the confidence of the team's good. Uh, we're looking forward to every game now. Um, obviously, it's another tough week for us with a three-game week, but it's a uh, you know it's a, it's a good game for us on Saturday against a very good Stockport team who are on an excellent run, um, and I think everyone expected to see that. Most of, most more so than myself, really, and given the fact that what they've recruited and and how they done last season, so um, you know it'll be a tough game for us on Saturday. Mm. They score a lot of goals, don't they? And that's that's been a key feature of their season. Yeah, and and they're they're hard to beat as well. I think you've seen over the last five or six games they um, they they are scoring a lot of goals and are conceding a lot. Um, so it's another challenge for us. It's a tough challenge for us, um, but it's one we're looking forward to. To tie the, the sort of two matches together, fans who've been speaking to us talk about they they feel that they see perhaps more of an aggression in the team when they play and the way you press. So how encouraging is that? I'm starting to see a lot of improvements in that aspect. Um, we've seen signs of it in pre-season, um, where, where the energy was great. You know, I think back to games against Sheffield Wednesday here, for example, where the energy, the, the aggression, the attitude, the aptitude. You know, the, there was no fear in terms of the approach, and that's the way I want my teams to play and this team to play. And I feel as if we're starting to slowly but surely see that. Um, and it's just it's just keeping on building on that really. You know, we don't want anyone to go safe and and think, oh, do you know what? I'll just stay here and maybe somebody else will do that job. It's mm -hmm. we would rather go for it. Um, no one, and you know what? If it's not enough and we, and we could be at least we can say we we have produced what we what we set out to do. Um, I guess as a manager, is when when you lose and you haven't done what you've worked on or the principles you've worked on or or what the boys know. So um, I think we're we're definitely improving on the, on on those aspects of our game. With that then, has that been more of a, a mental challenge for the players to get to where they are right now, regardless of any further improvements pending or a physical one? Yeah, I mean, look, it was always, we were always going to take a bit of time. I actually spoke about this before and, mm. and we're still going to take a bit of time. But it's, you know, there's no ma magic switch. It's not, it's not like you just turn a light on and off. It's, it's, it's gradual building. It's gradual players understanding how we work. It's gradually trying to get players back from fitness. It's gradually getting players who were here, um, changing their mindset from a, from a different approach or a different uh, ways of playing, um, and also the new players coming into the building, understanding, you know, and then it's it's moulding all that together. So it's 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 not easy. It's not there's no quick fix on it. It's 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 just continue to build in small percentages all the time to to make us better, and we're definitely getting better. We're improving all the time, which is a really good thing, and. Um, I probably, I think you'll probably see the best of us come December, January time. But we're we're definitely moving in the right direction. Because mm. in beating Crawley, obviously they are riding high in the division. 
so to a stock port so people will analyse and compare and contrast just to see where Doncaster Rovers are improving won't they given the nature of the fixtures you've got yeah I mean look the season's early um, it's you know you, you start speaking about this teams in this position that there's 11 games gone and it's you know I guess you start seeing the fruits of the table when everyone plays each other once I think that's when you start having a look at it and you, people know each other and they know what they're about and things like that so I think the nature of this division is that anyone can be anyone on any given day and I think that shows in, on the results you know nearly every Saturday so um, everyone's searching for that consistency everyone wants to to go on that five six seven eight game winning streak a bit like Stockport are now um, so hopefully we can do that at some point. So, thank, thank you very much. Grant, do you expect anyone likely to be back tomorrow uh, injured players? Um, like I say on Harrison hopefully he, he may be close, but apart from that, I don't think anybody else will be back. Yeah, did he, I think when we spoke, there were a few that were quite close to seem to, I don't know if they had a setback or something. No, no close. setbacks. It's more of a, it's more of a, uh, it's more of a uh, in-house decision, really, to make sure that we don't rush anyone back and, and, and miss them for longer. Um, we initially thought Jack Senior was going to be a few days, but it, it turned out it, it was worse than that it, it initially was, a uh, medial ligament injury. Richard would be thought it was a, a slight calf strain, but really he's not getting any younger. And, and unfortunately, when, in, when you're a bit older, injuries take a little bit of time. Uh, like I said, he's never had a muscle injury before, so it's just when he's comfortable, we'll get him back onto the grass. Uh, big old we know is only a, it is only a short-term injury. Um, and the others are a wee bit more longer term, you know. So Kyle Hurst is another one where we've had to take him a step back a little bit, get him one or two little injections just to let things settle down a bit. You know, we we brought him back after seven or eight weeks of the injury, um, which is was a, a, a decent enough time for him, um, but still not 100%. And the last thing we want to do is bring somebody into the group that's not 100%. That's not the way we work anyway. Um, so hopefully, like I say, by the... Early November, mid mid November, we should have, you know, the likes of the likes of Hurst, Miller, Maxwell, um, definitely Biggins, Woody, uh, Jack Senior, uh, and then maybe another week or two after that, Jamie Sterry. So we're starting to move in terms of uh, the injuries, and they're all working hard. You know, they're all maintaining their fitness, working hard in the gym. We just had new walk bikes delivered today, which is really good. Um, so they're working on them as well. That's one. Uh, Carl Hurst became a key player here last year. It took people by surprise, really, with his contribution. Do you see him as a key player in waiting? I'm looking forward to seeing him. You know, uh, I've seen him in pre-season. I've seen how he, how, how he can be really effective in our team. Uh, and it's he's, he's frustrated, obviously. You know, he's, he's a lad that's, again, not had any injuries in his career. I think he was available all last season. Um, leading goal scorer last season, I believe, as well. So, you know, that's a, that's a big player for us to come back. And uh, we want to make sure he's right when he comes back because, like I say, when when you get into that crunch time, that December, January, February, you, you want to be having a you know fully fit squad to pick from. Yeah. Did anything come of the uh, the investigation into the injury situation, the recurrences? Not really, I mean, there's a lot of trauma injuries. You know, there's a lot of injuries that we couldn't do anything about really. Uh, and when I say trauma, like contact, and um, we we've been quite good in terms of muscle injuries. Um, usually, when we do have a muscle injury, they're not out for that long one or two days or maybe one or two weeks in Woody's case um, but it's uh, yeah I mean look there's, there's the injuries is a, is a part of football unfortunately we got quite a lot at the same time and still have uh, but I've no doubt it'll heal good stuff uh, just wanted to pick up on what's, some of what you touched on with Andy um, in terms of the scale of the turnaround and what was needed here I know it's not the biggest club you've been at but is it the biggest job you've had today at Doncaster Rivers the second time around yeah I mean Given, given what's previously happened at the football club, and I never speak about things like that, but previously uh, what was going on here and, and that mentality of sort of losing, really. Um, that's what we felt when we walked in. We felt it was a little bit low. Um, and, we, and we're slowly but surely trying to change that. Not only with our own behaviours and how we work, it's, it's more about um, the players and, and what we expect of them and what we demand. and. And every training session's got something on it, you know. Whether it's a, it's a run if you lose or whatever it may be, it's it's. Um, we we want to try and create that environment of that, of that winning mentality, you know. And it takes time, of course, and we and we want to perform to win as well. So, um, we we are starting to work like that. I think the, the club are starting to buy into it. I think the fans have bought into it. So, 
Uh, once you've got a whole club pulling in one direction, then you've got a good chance. Have you known a? Have you had a relationship with fans at previous clubs like the one you've got here? Because it seems quite special. Yeah, no, I haven't, and and it, and it feels great, you know. And even though I played at Peter United and stuff like that, I never really felt I had that full backing and, and support there. But listen, a lot of the fans were great with me, but I didn't have the the, the full support like I have here. So, um, and that just makes me even more hungrier to 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 succeed and, and give them something that they you know they crave to to have, and that's to, to try and get out of this league and and get back into League One and at some point try and get into the Championship where I feel this club should be, but everything's building blocks. Yeah, Will Flint, uh, how's he been getting on? I know he's been the 19th man in recent weeks. He's been excellent. He's been, we, we offered him a pro contract yesterday. Um, he, he, we feel the kid has, has got a serious chance, you know, and uh, that's the second young player that Sam Brown has signed a, maybe, I don't know if it's been released or not, yeah, maybe throw himself into it, but signed a, signed a professional contract. Uh, Will Flint is another one we've offered to. Hopefully he'll sign over the next next few days and see if see a really big future in him. Really mature for his age. Um, trains really really well. Trains with every day. Um, had an excellent loan at Gainsborough where they where they where they thought really high of him, which is brilliant for him. So meeting him him, him his mum and dad yesterday, you know, then little bits of good news make you feel good. So I'm hoping he can he'll sign the deal over the next few days. Do you mind if I ask? Um Two things on Will. One, will you therefore send him out on loan or keep him around for a bit? And two, just on the length of those contracts that you've given out. They're both two-year professional contracts with with year options, um, which will kick in after their their scholarship. Um, so we 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 see a lot of potential in both of them, yeah. and uh, so it's uh, just making sure we nurture them right, keep them involved in the first team, let them train as much with us as possible, get them out into into loan clubs when when and if possible. At the minute, a bit difficult because he's he has been the nineteenth man yeah. in, in previous games, and that is what we've got available. You know, so it's uh, one player to do do start coming back. But look, like I said to Will and, and his mum and dad yesterday, it's his job now to to make sure when them players come back that they, that he's ahead of them. You know, and uh, that's the way we want to want to be with every young player that comes and trains with. Yeah, uh, is Sam fit yet? He is. He is. I think he may play some game time tomorrow. Um, for the under 18s and um, just build them up gradually. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, was, has there been interest in those two? Because I did hear a whisper there might have been some interest in Sam. Yeah, well, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, once once a young player comes in and around the first team and, and people start seeing um, what they're about, then it wouldn't surprise me. They're, they're probably two of the best young players I've worked with for, for quite some time, really. Uh, and I don't say that you know, throwing sort of comment out there. I think the both of them, just the way they apply themselves, attitudes, everything for me when you're a young player and their attitude is unbelievable, their ability, their energies. Um, so without jumping the gun on them, I think the football club have got two very good asset, assets in the, in the future.